Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back again using some of the products that I just showed in my last haul video. So I'm going to combine them with this Daisy Bouquet stamp set from Simons of Stamps, most recent release, and I was raving about the stamp set, had it sitting front and center now for the last week or two. So I pulled it out and pulled out the large actual bouquet from this set because there's like individual flowers, etc. And I'm using B watercolor paper and my travel stamp platform, my anti-static powder tool. And then I'm going to stamp this image with Simon's clear embossing ink. And I'm actually going to ink it up and stamp it twice, keeping the paper in the same place in the platform because the watercolor paper has a little bit of texture, not a whole lot, but it's always better to be safe than sorry, especially with really large detailed images. And as usual, my messy hair and head kind of gets in the way, um, especially here because I was, I'm was i really looking in real life. I can kind of see the stamping, not always. It depends on the light sometimes. It's really hard to see when you stamp like clear ink on white paper, but I could see it and it looked like I'd got most of it. So I was happy. So I'm gonna cover this with detail white embossing powder melt this with my heat tool. This is the part that looks really boring on camera because it looks like, you know, nothing's happening. Um, nothing's more boring really than melted white embossing powder on a white background. So melt all this with my heat tool, tool until it's glossy. Um, I tilt it back and forth in the light. If there's any like dull grainy areas, those aren't melted. Hit those with my heat tool, get everything melted. Let this cool off for the couple seconds it takes. And then I trim this down a bit. The sheets of watercolor paper are like six by nine. So I trim this down so it's like, right now it's like five by six. I'm planning on cutting this down more, but this is a really big image and I just wanted that little leeway depending on how this all goes. So for the actual watercoloring, I'm using some of these Wendy Vecchi dye inks. I've done other videos with these and I wanted to do just some really simple watercoloring. So I'm literally just smushing the ink pads. I'm working on my waffle flower uh, water media mat. Any non-porous surface will work for this. Like you could use a, I have the glass media mat by Tim Holtz. Um, even like a ceramic plate, like just something that you can smush the ink onto. In, in the past, you know, I would use like a transparency. Like again, anything will work. I just like this because the silicone kind of just keeps everything in place and it's nice and white. And then when I'm done, I can just roll it up, work on something else. So anyway, I just smushed the ink pads onto the water media mat, sprayed it with water. And for the background I did, like I added clean water first and then, you know, I kind of painted my background, letting it be messy. And then I'm painting in the purple and this is the thistle color. And my blue background is still wet. I'm okay with this. I did this on purpose. If you don't want, colors bleeding into each other and that sort of thing. Let the background dry or dry it with your heat tool first. But I kind of wanted it. I, I, I like that messy look. I've shown this in other videos and it took me a long time. <laughs> it took a lot of practice and just, it's funny how it's one of those things where it just, it took practice. It took years to get to like the messier, the better. And I actually really, really like it. But again, if you don't, then just let each color dry before going on to the next but I was letting them kind of bleed out and, you know, do their own thing. And with the purple, especially since those are, that's like the main focus of the blooms themselves, I kept adding more, like just going back in with more ink, less water to kind of, you know, to really darken those petals up and just add that extra definition to them. So once I was like happy with how those were looking, I'm going to go in and do the stems. And for that, I'm using prickly pear ink and not smushing the full ink pad, like just kind of pushing the very edge because I don't need much ink. There's not a whole lot of green, like green areas on this image. And then again, adding water, picking up with my paintbrush and then painting it into place. And then for the flower centers, I'm actually just mixing the colors together to kind of create, this is what happens when these colors, you know, opposite colors, etc., start blending is they create a muddy color, which I was like, that'll work good for the centers, which there's not much with these because they've been heat embossed. There's like most of its actual heat embossing, but I still wanted to fill in the little bit of areas that were there with that kind of brownie murky color I'd created. I let all of this dry and then I'm going to add some splatter because that's just what I do. <laughs> so I have my Gonsai Tommy palette out because I used it in my last video. So I hadn't even put it away and I was like, oh, now. Nah. So again, I'm on that kick. Like everything is getting like gold splatter. So I use this kind of silvery color first. And with these, you can see, I just sprayed them. You can do one of two things. You can work it up like I'm doing now and it takes a while. You got to work them up, 
work it up with the water to get the pigments to kind of mix because these these get very solid when they're dry so you need to work them up so you can either do it like that or you can add some water and let it sit for a while and you'll see when I pick up the gold um, the third one in that has sat for a bit with the water in it so it takes like no time to work it up so if you have a little more patience add the water to the colors you want to use and let it just sit for a little bit it doesn't take very long but it just it just lets that water kind of soak in and soften it and then you can you know mix it up e easily with a paintbrush so I heavily splattered both of those all over this panel like just covered it with splatter again let it completely dry before I started trimming this down so that it's a two um, size so I'm going to trim this down to four and a quarter by five and a half so just kind of going around with my little Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer here and just trimming this down until I was happy with it and it was the size I need for my card so again you definitely want the splatter especially to be dry before you start doing this otherwise you're going to smear it absolutely everywhere trust me been there done that so let that all dry and then for my sentiment I'm just using one of the smaller sentiments from the set I was originally going to like heat emboss the large one onto vellum and adhere it and then decided not to do that I just wanted something small so I used the just because sentiment and I just have some slate gray cardstock here just a scrap of cardstock and I'm going to white heat emboss the sentiment onto this so line this up and stamp this again with my little travel platform so antiseptic powder tool going to stamp the sentiment with the clear embossing ink and then I'm going to coat this with that same detail white embossing powder and then melt that with my heat tool and for this I decided on purpose to stamp the sentiment straight so I can actually just trim this with my trimmer this is the first card in I'm not even sure how long it's very rare now that I make cards that I don't use wafer dies on in some sort whether it's a coordinating die or a shape die you know like a circle or rectangle or the sentiment labels which I use all the time um, but I didn't use them on this I'm kind of surprised <laughs> so melted that with my heat tool trimmed this with my paper trimmer again and I was originally going to just trim it onto each side of the sentiment like just you know a little, little sentiment rectangle just just the sentiment but I liked how it looked um the whole length of this cardstock so rather than trim it down I only trimmed the one end just to give it that little bit of an angle so got that trimmed and then I'm going to uh, work on the inside of my card and my card base is just Simon's heavyweight white cardstock and I'm going to stamp these flowers again on the inside of the card using those Wendy Vecchi inks and for this the um, stamping doesn't need to be perfect. Um, I, don't, I don't bother you know masking off areas I want to use the two different colors of ink so I'm going to use the green and the purple to stamp these blooms so I'm going to kind of ink up the stems first and just kind of use the edges of the ink pad and the corner but again it doesn't have to be perfect it just I, I don't feel the need for any of this to be exact I remember years ago that this sort of technique used to really bother me because it was like you know the color has to go exactly where it's supposed to go you know the purple would have to be right on the flowers and you know no overlapping but with I don't I don't care I, I just I think in the end it still looks nice so I inked up the green first and then went over it with the purple on the blooms some of it overlaps onto the stems I'm not concerned with it so got everything inked up and then I'm going to stamp this onto the um, inside of the card and then once I've got that stamped I'm just going to stamp another little sentiment from that set just kind of tuck it in there under the bloom and I'm going to stamp that with the uh, sky blue ink just to kind of tie in with the colors I used on the outside of the card. So I got that stamped and then while I was looking at that sky blue I was like oh you know what would really set this whole like card off is to have a blue envelope as well. So I pulled a blue envelope out of my stash and I'm going to stamp these blooms onto the envelope with that sky blue ink. And with this it takes a little more effort to stamp because there's all of the like the creases on the back because you know it's the envelope has been folded even though it's thinner it can sometimes be a little bit more tricky to get things to stamp perfectly especially a large detailed image but got it stamped and then I'm going to add some more splatter because again why not plus it just kind of ties it all together and this looks really pretty on the blue so using those same two Gonsai Tombi colors and doing the exact same thing adding the water working it up putting it on acrylic block and then just flicking the paintbrush against the watercolor on the acrylic block to add all that splatter to the envelope so you don't really see the first one here much but you can definitely see it in real life when the light catches it and then I added a bunch of gold splatter 
set this aside to dry, wiped up my work surface, and now I can start assembling my entire card here. So because that first watercolor panel is A2 size, I'm gonna just adhere it directly to my card base using some Craft Tacky glue from Simon Says Stamp. So I just apply a good amount of the glue. It's warped a little bit from that watercoloring, but not a ton. So I just like using the liquid glue because it just gives me that wiggle room to line everything up. Because usually if I use things like score tape, etc., um, you get one shot with that and then it's, it's, it's done. You're going to tear things if you try and move it. So liquid glue for me gives me, it's a safety net. <laughs> you know, it gives me that little, that little bit of wiggle room. So I adhered that with the liquid glue and the sentiment I popped up just using some Darice foam strips because the two foam strips was the perfect size for this little sentiment strip. So got the foam tape onto that, peeled off the backing. I'm going to adhere this to my card base. And then as a final bit of embellishment, I am going to add some little Nouveau um, jewels in the little, these are the water droplets, they call them, the pure sheen gemstones that I also showed in the recent haul video. And they're just so pretty. So kind of sprinkled these rather heavily on this card. And once I was happy with how many I had placed, I'm just going to pick these up with my jewel picker and adhere them into place with little dabs of that craft tacky glue and just taking the extra, you know, seconds to kind of straighten these out so that they are, you know, placed properly. Because again, I have little touches of OCD. Plus I think with water droplets, they look, they look proper if they're, you know, properly up and down the way they should be. So got those adhered into place and that's going to finish off my card and envelope. As always, I will have a supply list and all links to everything in the description box below the video, as well as on my blog. Um, I'll have a link to my blog post that everything will be in the description box directly below the video. So you can check that out if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, for thumbs upping, for commenting. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.